Hey there everybody, Steve the Amateur Historian. And I'm actually on the south side of where you go in to uh, Reynolds, it used to be Reynolds High School, Reynolds School District. Had my family never moved from the area that I'm about to take you to now, uh, I theoretically would have gone to high school here, which is funny because I have very little connection to this area at all. I'm, I'm just east of 202nd and Gleason, and it just, it just opens up completely out here. Uh, this is all part of Gresham, but yeah, it just, it opens up and suddenly there's like not a whole lot out here. And the reason I've wandered so far a field of where I'm usually doing vlogging is because I'm gonna take you to the place where I spent, let's just say, the most impressionable years of my life. Pretty much the ages of one to almost seven. Me and my family lived in the small community of Fairview, bitches! I didn't realize as I was doing that little intro that I would literally be crossing the border into the little community that I spent. Again, I don't know exactly when my, when my family moved off of 130. We lived near 136th and Bush in Southeast Portland. And the area got too sketchy, got too ghetto for my mom. And she was like, no, 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 we need to get out of here. So we ended up, uh, moving to Fairview, which is a tiny town. I mean, size-wise, population-wise, is a tiny town uh, just east of Portland. Pretty much borders northeast Portland, and it kind of has Gresham wrapped around it on the west and south sides, and then Troutdale borders it to the east. And it's a tiny little area. There's been a lot more development since my family moved, because again, I want to say sometime late 1986 or early 1987, we moved here and we lived here till a couple weeks before I turned seven. So pretty much sometime 86, 87 until late October 1992, Fairview was what I called home. But I've only been back through Fairview like once in the last like 12 years. And that was a quick pass through with a friend. Ooh, I don't know what that's all about. So anyway, to get things started, I'm coming in from the south side because I noticed there's a, I think it's like a wetland here. And I thought, and I can cut right through it and get right pretty much to the intersection where I want to get things going. So I'm like, okay, show you a little beauty at the start and then dive on into my nostalgia, so to speak. And one of the main reasons I'm doing this is because one, I want to, and two, I always love it when other YouTubers, adventurer YouTubers, whatever, will randomly go back to like places they lived in. You know, they could live, they could have lived in an area that I've never even heard of, never been to. And you're still like, or like, oh, you lived in that little house? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I always love it. Like I know Adam the Woo has done a lot of videos like that and I love those videos where he's like, here's where I lived from the ages of this to this. I lived in this apartment and it worked here. So yeah, I, I'm i gonna do the same. So this is the, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, the Salish Ponds and Wetland Park. And I'm hoping there's not a bunch of homeless people in here. But yeah, I don't I don't even remember this being here when I was a kid growing up. If I ever went here as a kid, I have no memory of it. And so this is, we're pretty close to where I live and I have no memory of any of this. Yeah, and it's kind of this, this, this little wildlife park space that's, so you can go Where am I at? Oh, so I'm like probably here. So I could do the full wrap 
around. I might as well. That actually takes me closer to um, Halsey anyway. So yeah, just, I don't remember this ever being here. And I don't have any memory of my family ever taking me here. So, but this is, this is a part of Fairview. A very pretty part of Fairview, of which there's not really a whole lot of really pretty parts. It's nice, there's nobody here. Premier Protein, buy some today. Good to you, fair of you. There's some people on the other side of the, the pond that are staring at me. They probably don't realize I'm videoing myself. And I just did a cheers. I think they think I was doing that to them. Ah, I've been swindled. I thought this trail went all the way around. Well, obviously somebody found a way to get through. So anyway, uh... Back this way, I guess. Oh, somebody painted this rock. It's nice. Taylor and Kylie. So I don't know if they painted that or if it was painted in honor of them or what exactly. Oh no, somebody left their stuff here. So I'm noticing these markers here and it seems like they go up to 18 over there. So like, I'm getting like a golf vibe. Are people just, are people playing frisbee golf? Just hawking frisbees? <laughs> the, the pond. Oh, that breeze feels fantastic. Bet this is where there's like runoff because otherwise i'm like why is there a bridge here this is probably where it runs off no swimming or boating steep drop offs and there's reynolds middle school now from along halsey here here's a more uh frontal view of the uh, middle school which you can see it covers a lot of land because it used to be a high school and I remember my friend's brother like when he first started going to school here and if I was hanging out with my friend we would go there sometimes and of course you know my only experience was briefly at an elementary school and I remember like going into this school and being like oh my god this place is so huge because it was a high school Far she blows. I remember it being a lot further back from the street, but again, like most memories I have as a kid, everything seemed further away than it actually was. But I don't remember when the newer Reynolds opened in uh, Troutdale. It was probably before I started high school, but theoretically I would have gone to high school. At least I would have been planning to go to high school as a young kid. It would have been presumed that I would have gone to high school here, but that didn't happen. Here's the, the second pond, just a little east of the other. Fairview Community Park. All right, I'm gonna keep walking along this pond because it seems like there's a lot more people going that way. And these all come out at random points. I know even one of these trails randomly comes out at like an apartment complex. The type of wildlife you tend to see out here. Look at all those chickens. Red-tailed hawk. King, I love kingfishers. Northern flicker. Oh man, you actually see bald eagles out here sometimes. I can totally see that. 
it's a lot more like even on the other side of the road here it's a lot more quiet i could see animals feeling a lot more comfortable around here without turkey vultures mallards american coot hooded mergansers black tail dude yeah deer are a little hard to come by in portland but if you're in the right or the portland area but if you're in the right place uh oh look out for them coyotes possums pond turtles muskrat red-sided garter snake oh american red squirrel ground yep grounds i love ground squirrels bats yeah i could totally see bats gray squirrels northern raccoons striped skunk brush rabbit it's awesome so all of those animals you can come by in these parts probably not a lot of them out in the open during the day but they can be found in here somewhere now this part of fairview uh, this isn't the part of fairview i lived in i lived on the other side of halsey street and through here you can see these kind of tall apartment houses and stuff and this is this is the part of fairview that's been i mean i guess you could say gentrified over the years i'd say more that it's just been developed further and so there's a lot of homes apartments stores and things that are in this particular part of town that were not here when i was a kid growing up here and again you know i lived here a while ago but i mean i'm only 34 years old right now and i you know spent my early childhood here so it's, it's very interesting to me to see how much this general area has developed. Case in point. Like, yeah, I think I, I think I went down the trail. This trail just, like, comes out at this apartment complex that I assure you was not here when I was a kid. Going around the corner, la, 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 la. Yeah, this is the trail that just, it just drops you off in the middle of this big apartment complex. I guess whatever oh, what did I get myself into I can't figure out how to get out of this yeah I ended up turning I zigged east when I wanted to zag west so I'm literally just did a circle and I'm back this is Gleason which is fine it doesn't really matter so this is like really really new apartments not just squeezing through here because I need to get the F out okay yeah, so this is Gleason, and this is the Fairview Parkway, which is what I wanted to come out on, but I wanted to come out on it further down here. But that's fine. This is, this again, this is the area that's been more developed over time. I mean, granted, we're still in kind of this wetland area, but whatever the heck this thing is over here, that I'm pretty certain was not here. In fact, this parkway wasn't here when I lived here. I remember them constructing this after I'd moved to the Oak Grove area. So actually, yeah, pretty much anything along this stretch of road is post-1992. It would have to be. In essence, the same thing pretty much happened with Fairview as happened when I lived on 136th in Southeast Portland, which was you know, Fairview seemed like a nice, quaint community to live in at the time. But over time, it kind of started getting a little sketchy. And even the area that I live in today, when you see it, it, it has... It's not really sketchy. It's just kind of, you know, not very well... Not super well developed, not super well maintained. There's not even really sidewalks in the main little residential area. And I remember there were there were stories about a kidnapper who was like living in the neighborhood. Kids had gone missing. I never saw any verification for that. That may have just been a rumor going around, but I heard that. And I remember within a year before we moved, some guy got cornered by some cops and he had a gun on him. And I remember hearing about this and running into the house that I lived in. And I just cowered under a table. I thought this guy's gonna get into our house and kill us. And it was just, it was getting a little rough in this area. Um, by, you know, 1991, 92, 
And so again, it turned into like, you know, I think it was probably particularly my mom. My dad probably had some say in it. It was, there was this prevailing attitude of this neighborhood's getting a little whack and we need to get out of here. And then they started kind of fixing it up and kind of redeveloping certain parts after we moved. But essentially there's kind of two parts of um, Fairview. There's all these redeveloped parts that are kind of over here. And then you get to the other side of Halsey. That's the kind of part of Fairview that I lived in that really hasn't changed much. There's maybe a few new houses here and there, but pretty much everything on this side of Halsey was there when I lived here. This area feels so almost foreign to me. I remember you could go that way to get to the park that I'm gonna go to later. Uh, I remember like getting into the car and leaving to go see my grandparents in California and leaving at like five in the morning and being really dark and us driving down the stretch of Halsey towards 181st and ultimately trying to get to I-205. And yeah, you know, it was, it was the early 90s. And you know, when I was four, five, six years old, my, my friend Guy, who was a couple months older than me and his slightly older brother, we would just wander around town and our parents let us. You know, which is kind of counterbalancing the whole, like, this place is getting kind of sketchy and ghetto uh, aspect of things. But, you know, we did that. We roamed these streets. You know, I'd be four or five years old and be like, oh, well, you have a nine-year-old kid with you, so you'll be fine. I don't even know if my friend's brother was that old. But this, this was all just brushland. There was nothing here when I was a child. And now there's a freaking Target blows me away this was just all brush land like there just was nothing here no development there was houses on this side of the street but this was just nothing now you got a target and there's other stuff up here and here's something very pertinent to my childhood because you could see them from our house these two massive I think they're water tanks and I could always see these over the trees from where I lived. So I lived like right over this way and I could see these. Ah, I'm trying to get myself killed. My bad. Yeah. I'm pretty sure these are the ones that I saw. I mean, there aren't really a lot of other water tanks in the area. Now, all of this, all this housing, in addition to the target and whatnot. You see this brush in the foreground. That's all that, I mean, that this brush you see in the foreground of these homes in the background, those areas where those homes are now pretty much just look the same as this. This was all open, completely undeveloped. Still blows my mind to see how much development has happened out here over the years, knowing this town primarily from memory. And I'm getting close to where it's regarded as 223rd and also Fairview Avenue where Halsey hits it up here and that's when we're gonna really start hitting my old neck of the woods well this bougie stuff wasn't here was <laughs> yeah look at all these apartments you'd almost think you're getting into kind of a bougie area which you're, you're not it's it's really kind of smoke and mirrors I'll just tell you, growing up in Fairview it was anything but bougie. Now, if you look over here, this Chevron station, there's always been a gas station at this corner. I don't know if it was a Chevron when I was a kid. Oh man, and this sketchy trailer park with, is still here. I forgot all about this. And there's like the bridge, there's like a beat up bridge here. Like this used to be maybe part of Halsey. And it's just really an area where like these trailer parks are. That's exactly how it was when I was a kid. We're starting to see more of the Fairview that I know. And this area over here is still an open field. <laughs> but yeah, this Chevron station and these sketchy little trailer park 
homes here. That was the only stuff anywhere. This whole area around here was just this when I was a kid. And that's another thing about Fairview is apple trees. I'll get to a story about that in a bit. I don't know if this is the same exact gas station. It probably is. But oh my God, this minute mark, I totally forgot that this was here. And you can see this place hasn't changed in eons. Like look at this old 7-Up sign up here. An old beat up Fairview Minute Mart sign. And yeah, there was the this sketchy little, uh, God, I keep it here, it's trailer park essentially, mobile home park. I'm going the opposite direction of where I want to go, but I'm seeing, I know there's like a golf course down there, but yeah, this is, this is something I remember from my childhood. This definitely was here, 80s and early 90s. And I remember this Royal Mini Storage sign a lot from my childhood. That sign has not changed in eons. This has not changed at all. I love it. Maybe business has changed hands a few times, but other than that, because this is the same, these same letters have been on here for Lord knows how long. And you gotta love when you got old school signage. And there's nothing here. I don't remember if there was something here. There is a really old sign here that probably, I mean, this looks like just parking, but back there's more gravelly, like maybe something was there. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> those are memories I wasn't expecting to recover. I was just like, oh, the Minute Mart. So I'm continuing briefly east on Halsey before turning back. Oh, this is, this is cute. I don't remember this. But you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, Steve, the Target wasn't there. Like there was, there's a Fred Meyer that they built up the street over the years, but that wasn't here when I was a kid. It's like, well, wait, you, you didn't just go to the Minute Mart for all your, all your grocery needs, right? That there had to be another store out, out, out here. I mean, where did you go? I'll tell you where I went. I went to this little place right around the corner, which is now Sports Plaza. It's like a parts place. But this was a thrift way when I was a kid and we got all of our food pretty much here at this thrift way. And it's so random to see that it's not remotely that anymore. One of, the, one of the memories I really have of going to a place like this, we also went to Zim's, which was a store that left me in awe because it had a like globe on its roof because it was named after a guy named Zimmerman, so Zim's. And it said Zim's on the globe thing and like cursive writing. And it just had me in awe as a child. But Zim's and the Thriftway back there, those are the two primary places that the earliest VHS tapes I ever bought were at those places. Cause you know, VHS tapes in the late eighties and nineties, that was the rage. There was no DVD, there was no streaming yet. And you know, some of my earliest VHSs that we got, Disney movies, Warner, you know, Looney Tune cartoons, other cartoon videos I got, any video movies we actually bought. First copy of Coming to America we ever bought. It was all at like either this Thriftway or the Zim's off that way. We're now coming up to Alex's Bar, which is not what it was called when I was a kid, but this was like the only real restaurant in this area. It was just a, just kind of a, you know, cute whatever restaurant that we would go to from time to time. And it looks the same. This is how the building always looked. I'm wondering if the sign maybe was related to that because that sign looks old. But yeah, you know, we, we didn't eat here often, but we ate here from time to time. And uh, now we are getting into my part of Fairview, the part of Fairview that I remember the most. And first things first, this White House, dead ahead, right here. A woman named Connie lived in that house, maybe still does for all I know. And she was a babysitter of mine from time to time. I had like three or four different people that babysat me as a kid until my mom stopped working. And 
Connie lived in this house and babysat me and my friend Guy for a while. She had a big backyard with a creek running through it. I noticed there's still a creek over here. So I don't know, maybe they still have that big backyard. And there were three other girls that would get babysat with us. And one of them was just a bitch from hell. Fair view, keep it clean. Ah, I remember this girl making me and Guy cry once. It was horrid, but like, God, it's so wild to go past this house again. So again, this is 223rd, AKA Fairview Avenue for a little bit of a stretch, kind of the main road through town, but it's also east of all the residential area. Now this is the residential area that I'm about to go through. And if I'm correct, these townhouses here, my mom lived in these townhouses here in the early 80s. I'm pretty sure she said that's where she lived. And I know that she's told me stories about living in town, living in townhouses with friends when she first moved to Portland. And you see, as we go further along down the roads, we get further away from Fairview Avenue. Well, that's because Fairview Avenue runs north and south. Meanwhile, the residential streets here in town are a little bit crooked. They run like northeast and southwest and southeast and northwest. Did I say just say the same things over and over again? I don't know. And this is a very, this is, you know, like a six block by six block area, but it's the primary like old school um, part of Fairview. And I'm coming, this crossing street right here is Harrison Street. And I lived at 620 Harrison Street, a few blocks this way. And uh, trust me, I'll be making my way there soon. But one of the things my mom and I in particular loved to do was we'd get up and make the couple block walk, which of course as a three, four or five year old was like walking a marathon. And we'd walk a few blocks down and I'm so sad that it doesn't have the same name anymore and it's not even the same business because we would walk to this building right over here. I think it's like a tax and coffee place. I don't know, it's like a real estate coffee place now. Apparently they're open to get coffee. But when I was a kid, this place had one name and one name only. And that was the Little Red Store. And I don't mean that like, that's just what I called it as a kid. Hey mom, let's go to the Little Red Store. That was literally what this place was called. And I'll prove it to you with this image right here. So you can see we're coming from kind of a similar angle. But you can see there's the store with like the little house off to the side. I don't remember this little house part being there. I'm guessing whoever runs it lives out of it or at least has the option of living out of it. But yeah, we went to that store all the time. And I miss that it's not that store anymore. And I know the post office used to be around here. I'm wondering if the post office is still in this area. And then dead ahead there, that's I-84 crossing over the street. And that is where, or that freeway goes from essentially just east side of the river from downtown Portland all the way to Salt Lake City, Utah. And here I am in this little park area to show you a location that's probably of some of the most historic significance in Little Fairview here, which is the Fairview Jail. I came here with my friend and vlogged a little bit of it a while, a while back. We passed through here for the heck of it. It's a cute little park space with a little, oh, Fairview's early history. Hell yeah, brother. Uh, the Hess, and I think this house is this house right here. I'm pretty sure. So yeah, there's a few old houses. When was it? Um, Fairview's first city hall in 1912. And I don't recognize that building at all. There's a picture of the jail, which of course is right, right over there. We'll get to that. 
and so it was called flat iron block or the where it was put it's laying on stone yeah 1915 they built the jail so it's a little over 100 years old I'm not really see I'm, I wish there was more addresses put on here but yeah you've got you've got early Portland history here or Fairview history I'm so used to being in Portland now and I'm guessing this is Handy Park. Are we in Handy Park? I don't know. I didn't see a sign. Uh, there's some good old boys hanging out in front of the city hall. Maybe this is Handy Park. I really don't know. Let's let's find out. It said original gazebo, and now there's like this gazebo, and this gazebo doesn't look that old. Yes, this is Handy Park. Okay, so there we go. Question. So yeah, this is a newer gazebo and here is the Fairview jail as it still stands here I know this is like considered a major landmark it might even be a national land or like a national historic site now and I didn't even really know about this until I started elementary school and one day they had a bunch of us kids play in this park. And the principal told us about the jail and there was all the bad men that we had to put in the jail. And I thought, I don't know if you can see anything in there. You can see a little bit. Um, but yeah, she was telling us about all the bad people that got put in the jail. And they have a little rock garden around it now. That definitely wasn't here when I was last here. And it made me worry that, like, there, this was still being used and that there were still actual criminals in here. So while we were kids playing around here, I was just freaked out and scared the whole time thinking someone was going to bust out of this jail. There's another room over here. So it looks like there was kind of this main entry and there was a cell here and another room over here that maybe was a, it doesn't have cell doors. Like I love how it has the actual classic like metal bars. I know that, you know, that's commonplace, but just like seeing it in an old type setting like this and that this was their only like view to the outside world was like this little window. It's what you get for being a criminal. Mm. was a little path for some reason a part of me wants to say I remember this as a kid but I don't know I could just be blowing smoke Bon Voyage Fairview Jail never cease to haunt my nightmares and here's something that I understand but I also find so tragic for me personally I personally had to find out the hard way that the first elementary school I went to, Fairview Elementary, was demoed a while back. So we have a new elementary school here. And the school that is built, the land that is built on now, this was like the fields and playground area for the school I went to. Because the school I went to was like another block down. So yeah, you know, it's a newer elementary school, so it looks pretty much like every other elementary school built in the last like 10, 20 years. A little too, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. But yep, this is the school that's here now. And more towards these trees ahead, this is more where the school was. So yeah, this was mostly like, there was like a gravel path, there was like a jungle gym equipment, and then like fields through here. And the original school was actually here where this uh, playground is. It's covered basketball hoops. This is more where the actual school was, or the original school was located. And it was, I wanna say it was built in like the late thirties. So it was an old school. But yeah, it would have been right here, like through this area from the edge of this parking lot down here. 
and I was considering calling the school and asking. I wanted to like do a historic video on the school and maybe get to see where I had kindergarten in because it was an underground, you know, the land, you can't really tell now because it's all been changed, but the ground land kind of goes down. And so you'd have to, you'd be at level with the school and then you'd have to go way down this, this steep, really tight staircase to get to our room. And you could exit at a different area, but in terms of like the actual school itself, we were technically downstairs in a basement type setup. And the main entry, if I'm comparing things, probably would have been fairly in line with this area. Like right now, I'd probably be walking up the front steps, which if memory serves me means my kindergarten class classroom wherever it was probably would have been again down underground like right right in this area right here and just a little further down would have been where my kindergarten was and my first grade I went to first grade for about two months was way to the far end of the school so that classroom would have been probably somewhere in this vicinity if the school was still here but tragically alas it is not and fortunately like i remember these trees like these trees are these trees were here you know when the school was and yeah so the school would have been through here now it's over there and i don't like it one bit i understand the progress but i don't like it one bit oh my god i remember this how is this still standing? I remember seeing this as a child and being weirded out by it and it's still here. It literally looks crooked like it's gonna collapse. Oh my God, see, most elements of Fairview haven't changed. And look, you can actually see like, there's some actually some very old houses. Like that's definitely an older house. Yeah, I remember this building being here, but you can never see it because the school was in the way. So that's my little walk down memory lane in terms of my elementary school. And I don't know, I don't, the post office was maybe somewhere off this direction. God, I can't believe I remember this. I swear to God, this thing looked exactly like this when I was a little kid. You can see it's crooked, like it's gonna fall over. Wow, but that's the thing about Fairview. Uh, for all the redevelopment and just general development they've done in other cases, a lot of stuff in this area is beat up old school. Beat up an old school the way I like it. Like I feel like it would have been right down there there's a building that looks okay yeah like look at this house this house is very my era fair view um there's a bill this might have been the post office i remember my mom having to bum my dad's piece of crap car that she said hated him and he was like oh that's not true but the fact of the matter is that car would run out of gas on her at random randomly one of the tires blew out literally she was driving me from our house to the post office we are talking seven blocks and the tire blew out in that short time and she got pulled over driving the car and we discovered later on that uh my dad had stolen tags off of somebody else's car so when my mom got pulled over with me they, you know, they were like, the tags don't match her, you know? So my mom got in trouble. My mom ended up having to go to, like, court. And apparently my dad just let her take the fall. Now, that's her side of the story. But still, like, yeah, pretty, pretty sad. But yeah, I think, and see, there's, there's like a post office. There's, a, there's like a U.S. mail box. This might just be people's mailboxes, though, like, I think this building might have been the post office, but it's like, 
I, there's these homes that are butted up against it. I think this was the post office though. But I think like kid, like I saw some kids in the front yard. Yeah, I think this was it. And it's, it's not a post office anymore, I'll tell you that. But yeah, this is where my mom's tire blew out on my dad's car and we got stranded here. We had to walk home and yeah, I'm pretty sure this is it, but like, I don't know, maybe it's been, maybe it's been altered into housing because there's like a bunch of kids playing in front of it like they live there. I don't know, maybe it's a Lord of the Flies situation and some kids just were like, all right, we're taking this land. This is ours. So I'm presently walking south on 3rd, trying to get back to Harrison, which is the crossing street here. And then I'm gonna start heading west, a little bit closer to the area that I remember as home. Okay, this is wild. I didn't know that this went through all the way. We had one of these going through the backyard of our apartment complex and we would play on it all the time. And like, it's not that big, but to us as kids, it was huge. I didn't realize these like ran through this far. Cause yeah, you go a few more blocks down and we had one just like this. This isn't our one because ours would be a block north of here, but I didn't realize those things were all over town. <sighs> wow. So I'm back to Harrison and this is a building that really stands out to me from my childhood. It's a lot more fixed up than it was. This was kind of run down when I lived here. But this is like the community center. And it always stood out to me as a kid. I thought it was like a church. One thing I knew for certain was that it looks kind of like a house, but that ain't a house. And so that was always a landmark I loved seeing as we walked up and down Harrison Street, mostly going back and forth between the store. Oh man, this house got burned up. Wow. Jeez. It's the second like burned up house I've randomly stumbled onto in the past week. Okay, so I'm like two blocks from where I lived. Yeah. Just in the last like 10 minutes, these clouds have rolled in. We're supposed to finally get some real sufficient rain. But yeah, you can see it's just, this is where I grew up. It was just this little nook, you know, like five or six blocks going north and south, five or six or seven blocks going east and west. And it's just very simple, but yeah, this place, this area just kind of started getting a little sketchy in the early 90s. Now, I don't really remember it so well because I was a little kid, but yeah, we ended up moving to Oak Grove. Like we ended up moving like, what is that? It's over 15 miles from here. And then I lived on the two homes on the same street in Oak Grove over the course of like 17 years. Yep. The seediness is, it's just got real ominous with the sun hiding behind these clouds. It got real ominous in this area all of a sudden. Yeah, we're almost there. It's just across the street. I always loved this house, this is the house that was across the fence. Like literally, I could look out my bedroom window and it was here. And it's this freaking triangle, triangular shape. Like that's the whole house, that, and like this area by the garage, that is the whole house. And there's, see, there's the water towers that you can see. Those actually might be different ones because I can see two full, I don't know. No, 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 I think I do, I do see both of them. So yeah, those are the same water towers. <sighs> Who would have thought so much of my life spent in this one little area and it feels so foreign to me. But yeah, I lived on this side of the street and there's four, it's a four unit apartment complex. I lived in unit one, which is this first one right here. You can see through the trees. And my friend Guy lived in unit four to the other end. And yeah, this is, and this area looked so much bigger to me as a kid, you know, the areas always do. Yeah, right there, you see that? That was my bedroom window. 
<laughs> from the time I was one to seven. And they still have a dumpster, an actual old school dumpster out here. And it's still angled. And this used to be a lot more in the open because they demoed the house. There was an older guy that used to live. Why is there like nobody here? There's like nothing. But yeah, there was an old man who lived in a house up here and there's a house here and a house up there now. And they both replaced his because there was never a house that close to the, our driveway here, which by the way, my dad took up a lot of space at. So that, that right there is unit one. And that is where I lived. There used to be a tree like right here in front. And yeah, this is where I grew up. And it was, it wasn't this color. It was like a gray or a, no, it was green. It was like an ugly green. You see where these trees are. There used to be more of them and we would climb up the dumpster and climb in these trees. That was something we'd love to do. Yeah, so this unit dead ahead, that's where my friend Guy lived. And his dad drove a Jeep. And one day when he was, I was about four and he was like almost five, we got in his Jeep and we, he's told me he could drive and we rolled it down the driveway into the street. And literally this curb that I'm sitting on right now is the only thing that stopped us from plowing in to these apartments back here. All the stuff, you know, I learned how to ride a bike here. I, you know, we would go behind the houses. We, we would, when no one was living in unit three, which is this one right here, um, my friend's brother found out that they left keys up there and we went and got the key off of above the door and we would sneak into the unused apartment. But yeah, this one was my unit here, unit one right there. And God, oh, so many memories. I can't even put them all out, but yeah. And there was, there was a lot of kids that lived in and out of this. And me and my friend Guy's families moved at almost the same time. And I can't believe how tiny this property looks to me now like there's nothing here but it felt so open as a kid because this well this stuff has come in and taken over like it used to be along the side of the apartment right here along the side it used to be open and we could run around to the back and play and it was just a lot more open but with them cramming two new houses in here it's become like completely closed off and like, I remember our two units being separated by trees, but now they have like a connecting parking, uh, like a connecting parking lot. And that wasn't how it was. So it's just wild. But yeah, over here, there used to be a, a, there was one house, but it was closer to the street. And there was like an older man that lived here. We'd steal apples from his vineyard. And yeah, there used to be a little path we could run through, which I actually think is still here. Yeah, it's still here. This is where we would play, the area behind, which is now fenced off, so we couldn't even get back there if we wanted to. But this was this field area behind the apartment. So you can see the apartment is way up there. So this was all open to us back here, back in the day. And there used to be a guy that, again, the old man, he, right here, he had a little apple orchard and we would sneak into his backyard and steal his apples all the time. True story. And one day he caught us in the act. He was in his bedroom and we were stealing apples out of his orchard. And all of a sudden his bedroom or his bathroom window flew open. He was like, hey, get out of here. So we took off running. He came over and told our parents on us like, oh, well, go keep your kids out of my yard. And my parents were just like, don't worry, we'll take care of this. And then they didn't do anything. And the story I was telling you about how there used to be rumors of like a kidnapper in this area. It was off back here. I don't even remember, like I remember these apartments, I don't remember these ones.
My apartment being right over here. This used to not even be, this, this wasn't even, you couldn't go through here. This was like a grassy field with, there was like cement, 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 like blocks here that kept people from shooting up this grassy hill. So this, this wasn't even, you couldn't drive through here, which is probably why you'll note there's not really any driveways along this stretch of road. And that's because this used to not be a road through here. And I remember, particularly with these apartments, but yeah, my best friend's first crush was on a girl who lived in these apartments. She came rolling out of the driveway and down Harrison Street one day, and me being poorly influenced by his, my friend Guy's brother, Dusty, and his friends, we threw rocks at her when she drove by. Yeah, I was that kind of kid, little shit. And Guy kind of threw rocks at first, and then the second time he kind of didn't do it. And she ended up like noticing that, and they ended up developing this really big, you know, whatever a like six year old kid's version of a crush is. They developed that, and I would follow them around and bother them and annoy the shit out of her because I was like, I don't have a girl that's interested in me, and I'm just hanging out here. Like, no, you can't come along and ruin my friendship with my buddy Guy. Just, yeah. So like, even as I sat down there in front of the apartment, it was like, I couldn't even put together all of the memories that were flooding out of my head. Like there was a kid who got hit on his bicycle and my dad had spray painted a line at the end of the driveway saying like, you don't go past the line. And that was like acknowledged. And my friend Guy had a friend come over and he rolled right out into the street because he wasn't from around here. He didn't know you don't cross the white line. And he got hit by a car. He ended up being okay. He got clipped by a car. But yeah, like the police showed up to investigate it and they talked to Guy and you know, he's like five years old and he's like, no, 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 I didn't go out on the street because you don't cross the white line. And you know, my favorite memory growing up is me and him getting into his dad's Jeep and him telling me I know how to drive and us rolling. Because you have to realize we rolled out when we rolled down toward the street, we passed right by the living room window of our apartment. So if my mom was looking out the window, we would pass right in front of her. And just her looking up and seeing me and him just sitting in the Jeep rolling. I mean, he probably freaked out. Look at this high grade tree house. Damn, someone's parents love them. And you know, one of the, one of the things I really remember, is this Main Street? Yes. One of the things, because I'm going towards a park that we went to all the time, and I just remember my friend Guy's dad. He was a human version of Oscar the Grouch. And I'm not saying that because, like, oh, he was a grouchy guy, because he was. He was, he scared me as a kid. But I mean, like, he had a face like Oscar the Grouch. He had these, like, lamb chops that were kind of like, nah, that looked almost kind of like the scraggly Oscar fur. He was, like, four foot ten, I swear to God, you know, a guy with a severe Napoleon complex. And he talked like this. He talked like Oscar the Grouch. And to top it off, he was a garbage man. <laughs> and I remember his favorite threat to use on his kids, because he was, he was kind of a verbally abusive dad. Uh, he would say, I'm going to ground you for a year. He would always say that. Um, yeah, I didn't realize as a kid how kind of screwed up their family was. Like, I remember his older son, Dusty, got busted with a gun. And I, I was at the house and, like, his dad's chewing him out because his son randomly had a gun. His, like, you know, 12-year-old son had a gun with him. And I'm sitting there like, I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> See, I, I, I always remember because once you get right down, like, literally just like a block or two down from here my apartment was just a couple blocks that way everything suddenly changes and it suddenly looks like you're almost in a different town and i believe this is how you get to the park i could be wrong i don't even remember what this park is called yes here we go another place that looked astronomically huge to me as a child and when i came by here a couple of years ago with my friend nick i was like man this place is tiny because I remember this park being huge. I also don't remember there being this many trees. Maybe the trees were just smaller then. Oh, 
I guess it's larger going this way. Yeah, a lot of this stuff wasn't here. There definitely weren't this many trees. It was not this covered. But yeah, that big playground thing right there, that was definitely not here when I was a kid. And I remember this gazebo. This is the same gazebo from my childhood. And I remember this bridge to get onto it being like a football field in length. Again, as a child, you confuse things. Because <laughs> look at how small it is. It's nothing. And I'm pretty sure these aren't the same basketball hoops, but there were some basketball hoops over here. And anybody who's watched my channel knows I have at least something of a major basketball obsession. I always have, at least since I was like eight years old. I remember having to hop this creek as a kid. It's a lot easier as an adult. But these, ba there was other basketball hoops right in the same area. And the first times I ever really tried to shoot a basketball were at the, the hoops in this area. Again, I think they were different baskets, but this same area. And of course I gave up real quick because as like a four year old, you can't even get the ball to the hoop. But yeah, I remember running around chasing my friends through this park. And I remember this being a lot larger than it was, but I haven't been in this gazebo since I was probably six years old. How did I remember this being a really long bridge? Maybe I thought this was part of it. I don't know. That's what my memory is. My memory does not, the, the, this is identical. This hasn't changed one bit. And I, yeah, I remember this, there was like this bog that surrounds it. So yeah, this, these benches, I don't think were here, but yeah. This, and this is the same gazebo that was here when I was a kid. This hasn't changed. Uh, nor has the fact that there's this bog that goes around it that I always loved as a kid. But I definitely thought that this was longer. Let's see if I can get over this without falling on my face. See, that rock's actually a little bit loose. So yeah, this is called, I thought it was called Cleone Park, but the sign says it's Park Cleone. Which sounds very French. I don't even know if that's the right pronunciation. But yeah, this is a park that very much stood out to me in my childhood. Again, I remember being a lot bigger and a lot fewer trees. But memories are crazy, when, especially when you're a kid. So I don't know where this path goes. Maybe it doesn't really go anywhere. I checked my map app and I guess there's streets over here. This actually looks like one of the few parts of this neighborhood that's been more developed. Because it almost looks like this path just goes to the railroad tracks that run along the freeway but we'll see i'm interested i maybe this path has always been here i don't remember there being much of anything beyond the gazebo over here god what a simpler time not only was i a child didn't have to worry about squat there was no covid there was no trump presidency by the way, I passed by a house that had a sign up on over their garage that said like, all lives matter, not just one color. And I was in the middle of talking about something else because I was ready to yell something. <laughs> so yeah, it looks like, there's like steps here. Did there like used to be a house here? Cause there's like steps, but they're not like leading anywhere. And there's like a bunch of discarded, I don't know. So actually this, yeah, this looks like this is maybe just a, a trail that wraps around the whole park. And if that's, yeah, it just wraps up to the basketball hoop. So it's just like a little backside. I mean, it's cute. I'm not going to keep going that way because I don't want to go this way anyway, but it's cute. I like that. And I mean, that's mostly it in terms of landmarks that really stood out to me as a child here in Fairview. I knew I was going to probably be close to the end when I got to this park because it's to the edge of town. And I'm about to have like my third run in with this guy walking his dog. I've gotten a lot of looks from people. I think people in this small little little community here, I don't think they're used to seeing vloggers walking around or something like that. And I always remember being in awe of this area because we're literally like three blocks from where my apartment was, where most of my upbringing was. And this stretch always looked so, again, to use the term, I would have never used it as a child, obviously, but this looked so bougie to me, this little area. And again, you know, it always felt like it took forever to walk to this park, but it was like three blocks. And it does, it, it feels, you know, even though like 
I can really taste it. There's always been a little bit of a redneck element to this town and I'm still kind of seeing it in small bits. There's something so, and again, maybe part of it's nostalgia, but there's definitely a sense of calm that I feel coming back here. Like I'm already thinking about beginning to walk back home and having to go through like these really ratchety areas on my way back. And then there's just Fairview, you know? Little Fairview, Oregon, where I spent, you know, some of my most impressionable years. It was here. This is where I first started going to school. This is where I fell in love for the first time. Heather, if you're out there, I don't remember your last name, so <laughs> pretty much once we moved away, I, I don't have any clue whatever happened to you. But at least as far as memory serves, that is, hell yeah. That, uh, yeah, first time falling in love, I lived here. All the experiences I had with my best friend, I learned how to drive in Fairview. And uh, yeah, you can see the water tank kind of over the horizon again. It just looks down on and menaces this quaint little community. Yeah, it was nice coming back here. I got to see, you know, at least all the things that I know are still here. You know, things obviously change in 20, almost 28 years. Cause then there's like, you can see there's like a big ridge up there and it starts getting a little bit more, like there's just not much around here. So this is kind of as far, far west as it goes. And this is what, 200 and, 213th. So if I walk back up here, I get to Sandy, not Sandy, Halsey. Yeah, I, this is something I kind of remember from my childhood too, is the big power poles kind of running through town. Oh boy, I gave myself a bit of a climb to get through. You get, the closer you get to Halsey, you start losing the sidewalk, bit by bit, piece by piece. All right, so hopefully y'all enjoyed me returning back to a place of pretty distinct prominence in my earlier years. Again, I don't even remember living in Southeast Portland as a baby, but I remember Fairview. I remember a lot of Fairview and yeah, it was, it was nice coming back here. It's the first time I've come back in probably over a decade where I actually was able to just kind of see things at my own pace, you know? So it's, it's been a while. And granted, there is more of Fairview in general. There's more that runs south of where I was. Uh, there's a little bit that runs a little east. There's a little area, kind of a pocket of homes. A girl named Sarah and her brother Jake used to babysit me over there, but I don't have any idea what house they lived in, if the house is even still there. All I remember is they put me in a trash can once. Is that abuse? I don't know. I think it was a joke. Like not a like you go into the trash can now. So, and then of course you, there's, there's plenty more. If you go north of, you go under the freeway and north of that, there's, there's some nice homes there as you get close to Columbia River and Blue Lake State Park is up there. If I ever end up in that area again anytime soon, I might do some vlogging there. But again, this, this area is just so far away from where I live. Like I'm coming up to Halsey and Northeast 213th. So in essence, after already walking like seven miles, I'm like 130, 140 blocks away from home right now. Ah, where's the daggum maintenance people in Fairview trying to keep this stuff off my sidewalk? All right, my people. So making my way back west for the long trek home. So thank you so much. 
for joining me. I knew I really, I just, I've been getting an ache in the past week to do that, to just come back to Fairview and take in some of the old sights and bring back some of the old memories and nostalgia and things of that nature. I know after tonight, it's supposed to get rainy for several days and then it'll be back and forth and then essentially we're into the crappy weather where you never know when you're gonna be able to get out and vlog regularly because it's, it's October and that's what happens in Portland. So anyway, as always, remember to like, share, subscribe, hit up my Patreon if you want to help me out that way. I would appreciate it very much. Until next time, from the edge, as it is now, of Fairview, this has been Steve the Amateur Historian, and I'll see you next time.